Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and today we're going to examine the Lenormand snake card. Now, I'm going to start with a, a quick um, story. Yesterday as I walked my dog Beaker and his girlfriend Cricket around a pond, uh, we came upon a snake. And what did I do? Oh my gosh, a snake! You know, I mean, that that's just my reaction, right? And I think that's most people's reactions um, when they come across across a, a snake out in nature and Cricket being a little terrier jumped up in the air like her paws were on springs and you know this is the effect that the snake often has on us it's an unexpected hidden danger now the snake didn't strike because we were able to get out of its way and it wasn't targeting us to begin with all right so now think of this scenario when the snake appears in a reading did it appear in a small uh, spread in answer to a specific question? Well, then it is targeting you, right? It's targeting your question, right? Um, or is it in the far position in a grand tableau? Well, then it's not targeting you, and that's kind of like what happened at the pond, all right? Now, the snake is one of our warning cards, and when you see it nearby, and when I say nearby, I'm referring to near your card in a grand tableau or near a life area card in a grand tableau or landing in a small spread in response to a specific question, which makes it near the question, right? Um, so when it is nearby, know that you're in for some complications or difficulties. When near, it brings tension that you'll have to twist yourself out of by taking a convoluted path, maybe. Snakes generally remain hidden until they strike. Now, like the fox, it warns you that something's wrong, but in the case of the snake, it's a hidden danger that will strike unexpectedly if you don't find it first. The complications the snake brings are often personal, often related to those closest to you, people that you know. The surrounding cards will reveal the severity of the issue and will expose or can expose the snake's hiding place or will describe how you can avoid the snake or how you can find where the snake is hiding, okay? At worst, the snake will manipulate, seduce, and coerce you. No matter what, it's going to disrupt the status quo, right? Think of a nice straight path that you're following in life and then look at the snake. Look at the coiled, twisted snake. All right, that's what it's going to do. So when you see this card, consider words and phrases such as trouble, complex, detour, entanglement, treacherous, complicated, difficulties, twists and turns, lies, betrayal, poison, venomous, as in malice or spite, seduction, slippery, unseen dangers, unpredictable, untrustworthy, sharp-tongued, hurtful sarcasm, dangerous desires, hypocrisy, and sedition. And sedition is, um, for those um, who, uh, who don't know, um, those who use their sharp tongues to incite rebellion, usually against authority, right? That's rebellion. That's what sedition is all about. And that is the snake card, <laughs> which may or may not be a, a bad thing, you know? I mean, is the snake near the tower? You want to look in a grand tableau and <laughs> check that out. Okay, so in case you haven't uh, already figured it out, the core energy is negative. And it generally shows up to say, beware, look around, watch where you step. There's a hidden problem somewhere. Prepare for the unexpected. Okay, so descriptive meanings. This, this card can describe anything that's twisted, smooth, and slick, as in um, uh, uh, like a, a personality, right? Um, complex, um, s scaly, windy long, thin, tubular, um, rivers and streams, wires, chains, tubes, 
right? As an equestrian and a dog trainer, the snake often shows up to describe leashes, reins, uh, lead lines, and harness straps. Now, in describing a person, if you're um, looking at physical descriptors, um, they could be attractive in a dangerous and provocative way. They may have dry uh, and scaly skin, piercing eyes, uh, they may be tattooed, have a smooth way of moving, as in slithering, right? Uh, personality and character traits include unpredictable, disloyal, manipulative, calculating, deceptive, tempting, um, seductive, uh, dangerously seductive, I should say, <laughs> devious, selfish, untrustworthy, two-faced, and just downright nasty. Uh, snake types bend the rules and the truth. And uh, these descriptors, along with the Queen of Clubs chord inset, makes this a common card for a female rival. Um, and um, like, uh, okay, now think of the, the card that generally represents a rival of either gender is the mountain. Uh, sometimes the fox may be a rival as well. Um, but the, uh, the, the snake typically shows up as a female rival. And in some older literature, you may see widow listed as a, as a key word for this card, right? Um, because think about it, you know, when this deck was developed, widows were uh, typically seen as being on the prowl trying to get your husband, right? Trying to sneak around and get your, <laughs> get your husband because they lost theirs. <laughs> Aye. Um, it may also describe a stalker or the proverbial snake oil salesman, also described by the fox. You're going to see a lot of uh, commonalities between the snake and the fox. Um, occupations may include poison control, a snake charmer, a herpetologist, a plumber, or an electrician. Uh, how often do you encounter a snake charmer or a herpetologist for that matter? <laughs> When was the last time you said, hey, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm a snake charmer. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going out like girls night out and you're sitting in a bar and there's that obnoxious guy who won't leave you alone and he asks what you do for a living, don't, don't say snake charmer because, you know, he's totally going to be into you then. Tell him you're a herpetologist because he's probably going to think you work with herpes patients and he's going to leave you alone. <laughs> anyway, okay, so in a daily draw, um, it usually shows up in my dailies to tell me that I'll be doing things the hard way, like not following the most direct path, right? Um, I may become entangled in road work detours if I'm driving. Um, no matter what, when the, the snake shows up in a daily, I'm, I'm just careful who I deal with, you know, on a snake day. I just, I'm more uh, vigilant, more aware of what's going on around me. Um, it usually says that your day probably won't proceed along a straight path. Um, you may encounter snags or detours. Uh, sometimes in a daily, it's just describing a river, especially um, a stream, um, maybe that blocks your, your path, right? Um, and that happens, that, that actually came up in a daily for me when I was, um, you know, I'm almost always hiking in the in the woods, and a lot of these trails are on the edge of a mountain. And you, you really, if you're not on the trail, there's no other way to go. You either have to proceed forward, or you have to turn around and go back. Um, and one time, the um, the card showed that there was going to be a, a problem, um, a snake along my path, and it turned out to be a stream that was never there before. And it was almost like a river um, because uh, this was when the snow was all melting and everything. And I had to turn around and go back. <laughs> and actually, another uh, daily, I was in Cape Cod and um, walking on the beach. And the, the daily that morning, I know it had the snake and it had uh, the stork because it shows marshland. And I was hiking like in the marshlands. Um, and it had the, uh, the uh, anchor, I believe, and the sun. I forget what else, but anyway, um, what happened is the sun was shining down and something glistened in the sand and I reached down to, to uh, see what it was and I pulled out this, this gorgeous leather leash that someone had lost and this, the sand had just blown over it. Um, you could tell it hadn't been there long, but that was what the cards were trying to tell me was that I was going to uh, 
along the marshlands, along the on the beach, I was going to uh, find um, the snake card showed that I was going to find a leash. Okay. Now let's see. Um, in advice readings, it can suggest that you take a roundabout approach or the opposite, which will um, depend on the other cards, right? It may tell you to take the roundabout approach that the snake is showing, or it may warn you that there's going to be um, detours and that you should take a more direct approach. Um, if you're asking if you should take action, the snake says don't strike until the path is clear. Proceed at your own risk. Use caution. It may tell you that something is complicated, that you're going to have to charm your way out of it. Um, look around and identify um, hidden issues. Don't get tangled in lies. It's time to straighten things out. Uh, you'll reach your goal if you take a detour or you may have to maneuver around things to get to where you want to be. In work and business readings, the snake may appear to warn you about malicious intent from a coworker or a competitor. It may simply imply complications at work or a situation where you have, have to make many bad turns before you see results or many wrong turns. Um, it may show that there are hidden issues that will, will bite you where the sun don't shine if you don't find them, right? So be diligent and observant and find out what this, why this card is appearing. It's trying to tell you there's something hidden somewhere and you need to be cautious and you need to, to look around, be more careful. Watch where you step. Uh -huh. Watch your step. There you go. There's a, that's a good advice uh, phrase for the snake. Watch your step. The fox, on the other hand, um, can just show that someone is doing something unethical, right? Uh, we're, we're still talking about work and business readings. Um, while the snake is, is targeting you and wants you out of the way, it's, the snake is, is almost always more personal than the fox, whether it's uh, relationships or work uh, readings, whatever it is, okay? Now, spiritual readings. It may refer to yoga, especially kundalini yoga, uh, which is a yoga practice that attempts to release the, the, that kundalini energy that lies coiled like a serpent at the base of the spine. Um, it may also tell you to straighten your spine when you meditate or tell you to take a more direct route towards spiritual enlightenment. It can tell you that it's time to untwist yourself and slow down and lighten your load because no downtime equals mental overload. Um, it may, you know, you're twisting yourself in knots, in other words. Uh, you're wasting your time and energy with detours, okay? Those are all spiritual reading possibilities. Now for relationship readings, it's definitely not a card you wanna see in a relationship reading or near the heart in a grand tableau. But the other cards will tell you how serious it is or not. It can refer to anything from complications in a relationship to jealousy of a rival all the way up to adultery. And which one will depend on the question and the surrounding cards. So don't immediately uh, look at the snake and, and uh, say someone's cheating. And, and I've seen um, this is happening more and more, I think. Um, where people, uh, some people, when I've asked people their uh, primary vibes for the cards, I've heard some people say that their primary vibe for the snake is the other woman, <laughs> you know? Um, and while the snake can refer to another woman, that is not its core function, okay? So don't just jump to that. All right, in health readings, the standard meaning of the snake may um, apply to treatments or diagnoses um, in a health reading. So you have to you know, know what your question is. Uh, being the card of deception, it may indicate false diseases as in false pregnancies, um, which are pretty common in animals, or imaginary disorders um, with hypochondriacs, and, and the fox can indicate these as well. It can refer to being poisoned, uh, which could be intentional or inadvertent via a treatment that you're allergic to, right? That's, that's poisoning your body in a sense. Uh, it may indicate worms, tapeworms. Um, it may have something to do with dry skin. Uh, um, 
you know, with favorable cards such as the ways, it may point to seeking an alternative uh, healing approach. And it has come up uh, for me in that way in readings. Okay, now looking at the cards on the table, we have a lot of snakes in front of us. And you can see that um, mostly the snakes are depicted as being, well, I shouldn't say mostly, but they're, they're usually, or often, how's that? They're often <laughs> depicted <laughs> as being fierce, about to strike, right? Anna Kay uses the um, Garden of Eden scene. Um, you know, pretty much they, they, uh, they're looking pretty fierce. Here we have a cobra that's about to strike. The, um, the fairy tale fortune card, the snake exudes charm and flattery, beware. Very true, that, that snake wants you to think it's your friend, right? Yeah, but beware. Okay, and then the kitsch uses the uh, snakes and ladders game. The snakes and ladders uh, game, by the way, um, in, in America we call it the shoots and ladders game, and that's because Milton Bradley repurposed that snakes and ladders game, which is ancient, and named it shoots and ladders because, you know, <laughs> The American kids didn't want to be scared by the snakes. <laughs> right. Anyway, I mean, the original game dates back to India in the second century BC, the, the snakes and ladders. And it was, it was intended to impart lessons of morality. Snakes were allegories for various vices. And, and you landed on the snake's head, and that would cause you to uh, slide all the way down to the bottom. Um, and the, obviously, the object of the game was to get to the uh, to get to the top, the winning the winning space. Okay, now we can compare the the snake is almost always compared to the fox, so that's uh, that's primarily what I'm going to compare compare her to. All right. So when you compare the snake to the fox. Um, you know, they both are uh, warning cards and they both uh, ask you to be cautious and suggest that things are possibly going to go wrong. Um, but the snake is more likely to represent hidden traps that are set for you personally and are quite unexpected. Um, the fox just wants what it wants. It's the self-interest card. So if it does hurt you, it's just because you were in its way. Um, it often describes sneakiness that never intends to be found out, right? That's the fox. Um, the fox is often out in the open, but masked to appear as something else. It doesn't really want to, you to notice it even, whereas the snake remains, wants to remain hidden until its target is within reach and then it strikes and then it's going to make itself known, okay? Um, if you compare these two cards as they relate to people, the fox simply lies and cheats to get what it wants, but it doesn't want to hurt you. If it can avoid it, it will, right? The snake, on the other hand, is a backstabber. It's pretending to be your friend, right? It's charming you into getting you to think or act a certain way. It often acts out of jealousy or spite, while the fox is just motivated by survival and getting ahead. Um, you'll often find the snake in personal relationship readings, while the fox is more likely to show up in business and work-related readings. Okay, and we can also compare the snake to the ways, um, simply because of their relation to a path, right? Um, you know, so the, the ways can describe options via direct paths, where this snake is describing convoluted paths that will set you back somehow or danger along your path right whereas this is saying you have you have other you have uh, options of which path you want to take you know it's a positive card right here we have a negative card of watch out there's danger on the, on the path so seeing these two together you know think about that uh, we can also compare the snake to the clouds um, because the clouds can refer to troubles, uncertainties, and hidden issues that just appear like clouds in the sky, right? While the snake 
indicates hidden issues that are lying in wait for you or troubles based on taking an indirect approach or even someone intentionally setting you up to fail. So you can see how they're similar and how they're different there. All right, so we are going to look at a grand tableau. And I am going to, um, let me see here. Okay, there we go. We'll put the candle back there. All right, there it is. Okay, now, looking at the original instructions, which by now you should all know are the Philippe Lenormand original translations. Okay, the serpent is a sign of misfortune. It's crystal clear, it is a negative card, it is a sign of misfortune, right? Um, the extent of which depends upon the greater or smaller distance from the person. As always, the plot is referring to the grand tableau. It is followed invariably by deceit, infidelity, and sorrow. I like, like how they put in, invariably in there. Like, there, no matter what, <laughs> this, the snake is going to bring either deceit, infidelity, or some sort of sorrow. Whew, them is fighting words. All right, now the original game instructions, right? You know, the original game, which is Das Spiel der Hoffnung, which is, uh, that's the deck you're looking at, by the way. This is the mini um, uh, Primal Lenormand, okay? Um, if you landed on the snake, you must pay three tokens to stay safe from the snake's bite, okay? Now the coffee card verse, uh, the serpent referred to an enemy that brought falsehood and enmity. I can never say that word. Enemy and enmity. Enmity is when you're uh, actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. All right, so that's what the serpent was all about in the coffee cards. Okay, so what do the method of distance guidelines have to say? Whenever the snake is near, it brings adversity some sort of adversity and tension. No matter what, it's gonna bring some tension, okay? Um, the surrounding cards will tell you where, where to look for it, where it's hiding, what it's all about, right? It warns you to be on guard. Remember that you don't want to be within striking distance, so you don't want this card near your card um, or a life area card. So when it's far, you're not in direct danger, but it still brings complication to whatever it touches. So there again, you wanna see if it's touching any of your life area cards. Now, the directional cue. The snake faces or points to betrayal or complications. And in my book, I used the word receiving. You can see I already wrote, wrote in or explaining. I have the card the snake faces is receiving the betrayal or complications. And in a grand tableau, um, that's almost always the case for me. Um, but I think uh, it'll be more helpful for you if, you if you think of the card that it's facing, not just as receiving the betrayal, but uh, also as possibly just explaining the betrayal, especially in small spreads, because so many of you um, only use small spreads. So I think that'll be more helpful for you. Okay, um, let's see. Yee! All right. Clusters. It is part of the gang of adversaries. Um, now, in this grand tableau that you see in front of you, this was a grand tableau for a man, and it was a classic scenario of the cheating wife, okay? I think I've used this in other videos, but Maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, but it's a good one for the snake card, to explain the snake card, because here's the man, and you can see he's down here in the fate line. He's, you know, um, he's got the, the cross stabbing him <laughs> in the head. He's turning his back on, the, uh, <laughs> on the, the enemy card here. 
Anyway, I'm not going to read the whole grand tableau, but if you notice, his wife is far from him. She is above him, um, right? And she's like more in control of things than he is. He's down here being stabbed by a cross. Um, but you can see the snake is touching her. And I wanted to show you this one because this snake, I know it's, it's a little hard to see in this um, image, but the snake is actually facing the other way. Now, does that matter to me? No, because the snake is touching her. These directional cues provide supplementary information if you acknowledge them at all. You know, when we're talking about traditional reading. Um, they're not a primary um, means of interpretation. Proximity and card order is al always takes precedence, all right? So the fact that the snake is touching her um, brings the, um, the betrayal, right, to her. Or she's explaining the betrayal, we could say, right? And if it were this way, if it were facing her, I would still read it the same way. Okay, so you want to see what the snake is touching. Don't just get caught up in looking to see what the face of the snake is pointing to. All right. Now, how many of you remember from the dog video what the dog means when far? Speaking of directional cues. Okay, this is a good one. Because the dog faces loyalty when near, but disloyalty when far. And look what it's facing, her, yeah. So now you can see she's got some horrible cards around her too. <laughs> she's got the card of change. She has the card of being carefree and taking chances, right? And um, enjoying the finer things in life. Right? <laughs> Maybe accepting other invitations, right? Here we have, you know, danger. Um, uh, and we, we already have the dog um, telling on her, disloyalty, disloyalty. <laughs> You know, and she's got the, uh, the, the unhealthy tree above her, and she's got the, the clouds and the snake, right? So she's got a lot of problematic cards. Now, we're just focusing on the snake for this video. So what if we were to replace um, some of these negative cards, right, with some positive cards? What if we um, threw, like, the, um, the, the star above her and gave her um, the moon instead of the scythe? And um, what else can we do to... You know, let's give her the garden instead of the clouds. Um, and uh, let's give her the child instead. Well, we want to keep the snake there. All right, let's give her the child. Well, we, we still want the dog here. You know what? Let's do like here. Let's do this. What if we were to do something like that for her? All right. And, you know, we're still going to say that this is a reading for him and he's wondering if, he, if she's cheating on him, that kind of thing. Um, and she has the snake touching her. But, ooh, ooh, wait, I have a better one. I have a better one. Here, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's give her the lily. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what if we saw something like this? So, she has the, okay, we can still give her the dog facing her. So, the dog is saying that she's being disloyal, right? And the snake is, is confirming that. The snake is saying, oh, betrayal, betrayal right? But she's got the lily above her head. She's being blessed by the lily. This is saying that she's not doing anything intentionally wrong, right? And she's got these other cards. She's got like the, um, like the, the providence cards and the interpersonal cards around her. And it, this would tell me that she's like caught up with, in something with other people um, that may appear to be deceitful to him or, or may... Um, be going against loyalty to him, but it's not intentional, right? That would that would paint a completely different picture of this what this snake is saying. So that's what I mean when I say it it depends on the other cards. Okay? That the other cards are explaining what this snake is saying and the severity of it. All right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, that's it, my friends. As always, I hope you found this video fun and informative. And don't forget to like and share as well as hitting that thanks button if you're inspired to do so. 
Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye everybody!